Good afternoon. Just uh, update on uh, our team. Came out of our bye week. Uh, really thought that uh, the guys um, did a really good job. I had a couple days of practice and, and uh, focused on fundamentals and, and uh, just blocking and tackling. Major emphasis technically getting better and getting some guys healthy, getting them rested, refreshed. Uh, that was a huge priority as well. I gave the guys uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday off and then back on Sunday. So I thought that was good. Coaches went out, did a lot of recruiting. Very, very important part of uh, what we do. Got to see a lot of players practice and play. I was very productive. So uh, um, good bye week for us and much needed in a lot of different ways for our guys. So from an uh, um, injury update from the game, unfortunately, uh, Cam Camper has torn his ACL and he'll be out for the rest of the season. So we'll be having surgery. Um, in the near future, I uh, did that in the first half against Rutgers and uh, obviously uh, feel terrible for him, uh, but a uh, huge part of our team. But he'll be uh, uh, beginning that long road of recovery and our staff will do a great job of getting him back um, and having him ready for, for the fall. So, but uh, uh, Cam Jones still week to week and uh, some other guys that uh, we're trying to continue to work to get healthy and get them as many guys as possible ready to play. Uh, very uh, excited about this weekend. Anytime you have a chance to play one of the best teams in the country, it's an awesome thing to have them here at home. And uh, Coach Franklin continues to do a tremendous job. They're at Penn State, a very, very talented football team in all three phases, and uh, a team that uh, we play every single year. And uh, have to find a way to um, do our very, very best to be able to uh, come out with a win on Saturday. So very, very talented football team that uh, is coming to Bloomington and uh, excited to see what they can draw out of us in a positive way. Questions? I recognize I'm asking for state secrets to some extent here, but with the bye week, the chance maybe to rest some guys, give some guys more reps in certain situations in practice, and now maybe an injury or two, are there some guys that maybe weren't playing as much before the bye week that you could see these last four weeks getting on the field a little bit more? Yeah, the thing I focused on was rehab, reps, and rest. And you had guys in different categories. Some guys needed to rehab uh, injuries. Some guys needed to just flat out rest. We didn't practice them at all. Um, some were older guys that played a lot of snaps. Um, and then a lot of guys got a lot of reps that they have not gotten in the past. So guys fell in those different categories based on our analysis of where they were at and what they needed. And uh, just think a lot of the younger guys, you know, I think a guy like Philip Dunham kind of comes to mind uh, really – see him get a lot of reps this past week um, and during the bye week and expect him to continue to grow and develop. Um, I think that's a huge opportunity for him. And uh, Brylo and Lanier, same thing, even the younger guys in our program defensively. Um, Caden Turner, another guy that's uh, got a lot of reps um, that uh, continuing to, to elevate his preparation and opportunity for him to be able to, to keep growing as a player. And, and uh, I just think also our offensive line just trying to get, you know, even though those guys are playing with us now, Josh Sales and Khalil Benson just continue to rep those guys, uh, grow them, bring them along, allow them to develop, as well as um, you know our skill guys that are younger as well, just trying to continue to bring them to uh, the point where they just keep getting better every week. So um, a lot of guys got a lot of good reps. Did he did a younger guy scrimmage uh, there on Wednesday? We got a chance to get those guys out there to go some live reps and have some fun with that. So I had the GAs calling the offense and the defense and had a chance to, to be able to do some positive things. So, uh, yes, good question. Tom, uh, I think at, at the end of the game, uh, after the game Saturday, you, you said everybody was going to be up for evaluation, basically. Uh, what was your evaluation of the quarterback position, and is that position still in the same place it was? Yeah, we're definitely uh, um, going to be able to look at all that, already done that, and uh, we will – move forward with that position, and, and uh, I guess we'll have to see how that plays itself out, you know, when it comes to, to, to game day. But uh, at the same time, um, every position, as I said, is up for evaluation, and that was the case. And, and we're just trying to find uh, the best combination to be able to give us a spark on offense and allow our guys to be able to, to move the football and score points. So didn't do that in the second half. Uh, have not done that well in the second half from several different games here recently. And so definitely need to get uh, some – a different product, a different output of our offense in the second half for sure. So everybody's up for evaluation, yes. 
coach Penn State comes back in, and the last time they played in Bloomington, one of the hallmark moments of the recent years in the program. Obviously, a little bit different situation, but the goal remains the same to upset them. What do you remember about that game in 2020, and then what do you guys, you know, look to take from that performance and hope to replicate? Well, you know, it was definitely uh, something that uh, a big part of our history. Um, in that moment, unique situation for sure with the way it all, you know, kind of played itself out in regards to leading up to that, weren't we supposed to play them, you know, to start the season and with the schedule change and everything that happened with the pandemic, uh, that was the case. And, you know, limited fans were obviously in attendance. And and so the thing you remember is just guys found a way to finish the game, you know, and didn't uh, – you know, got off to a strong start, led most of the game, and then you know, fell behind there at the very end and then found a way to, to rally back, sent overtime, and, and have a historic play. So, uh, But it's in the past, um, and a uh, new team, a lot of new guys, a lot of new faces on both, both teams. And uh, so um, great opportunity for our team. If you, anytime you have a chance to play a, a top team in the country, you know that's what you want to be able to do. And our guys uh, have a big week ahead of us to prepare for that. So um, just got to find a way to – continue to get better and finish games. Tom, the, uh, the continued development of Jalen Lucas, what are you seeing from him and how much more uh, impact can he have this season? Yeah, I, I think uh, he's another one as we, even as the bye week, you know, unfolded, <laughs> continuing to find ways to get him the football. That's my charge to the offense, uh, has been for a while, probably since the first game. So um, just always just thought, just, you know, he, since he's been here, he's different. And, uh, um, trying to bring him along in, in his understanding of what we're doing. Obviously, you saw what he can do in the return game. You know, now he's leading the country in kickoff returns. And, and uh, so just once again, you want to find ways to get him the football. You know, his quickness, his burst, his speed is, is elite. And he's a tough, tough, hard-nosed competitor. So, yes, he needs to be a huge part of our offense moving forward, yes. Tom, at three and five right now and four tough games remaining, and I know we, you take each game at a time, but with these four last games, what do you need to see from your team to, to look back and say there was progress in that last mm -hmm. quarter of the season, whatever it was? What do you need to see in these four games? Yeah, I think step one is to be able to um, consistently execute our fundamentals and our techniques. You know, that includes schematic execution, uh, the consistency there, continuing to see the growth from our younger players that we're playing uh, to our older guys that are still, you know, having to, to, um, to make plays for us. Uh, that consistency is never going to cease to be a priority for us. Uh, it was last week. It's got to be this week. Um, and, and I think to me it's, and it's about um, coming out of the second half and finishing, you know, and, and I think that's uh, something that we didn't do in our last couple games that we had opportunities to do that. And, uh, um, even though our, our conference games have come down to the fourth quarter, uh, we haven't found a, uh, enough ways to make plays to finish those games the way we want them to. So just want to see that fight, that finish, uh, the execution at those critical times. And so that's never going to cease to be a priority and continue to, you know, make changes. We've got to make changes. Whatever we got to do schematically, uh, um, personnel-wise, what do we need to do to be able to get ourselves in that position. So, and uh, you just want to see younger guys develop as well. You know, some guys are going to get opportunities because of some guys being dinged up and, and already have had those. And, and I want to see them rise up and, and, and have a great finish to the 2022 season. Coach, I think Taiwan was just talking about how basically the bye week you guys used obviously to get healthy, but also to kind of focus on the mental side of things. Mm -hmm. What as a coaching staff, have you guys emphasized that maybe just to make sure that guys aren't mentally checking out, that they're staying locked in, they're staying focused on, on the rest of the season? Oh, there's no question, you know, and I think it's a huge priority and something you talk about and uh, don't uh, shy away from and don't uh, fail to address. Uh, I think that was has been the focus without question, just using various videos, just various information that I utilize and I think is powerful for your mind. And, and I know our minds are very, very powerful and I know that that seasons can, can get hard and, and frustrating and and uh, when you when you play the schedule we play and you got to find a way to win those close games and, and we haven't recently uh, it is frustrating you know so but you also uh, you, you find out who um, 
who you can really count on, who you can depend on. And, and he's one of those guys, guys you just keep fighting, you know, and we got a whole bunch of those guys on this team. And so that's where, you know, you rely on that. You rely on that leadership. You know, I've challenged our coaches to identify guys in their position rooms, and we're going to be able to, to do that here this week and, and to be able to, to rely on that component of our program, our leadership that's all – in place here, which allowed us, I thought, to practice really, really well. You know, the two, the two um, bye week practices, which can sometimes be challenging, especially in that situation and coming off a t- another tough loss. And so, I think that our culture, you know, kind of, you know, rose up and showed what really we have here. We've got to continue to build off that, and that to me is. You know, this is the fourth quarter of the season, you know, our last, our final four regular season games. So our guys have got to respond to that, and I expect them to. But, yeah, it's a, the mind's a powerful thing, and right now it can it can be lying to you and, and, and tell you things, and then you believe things that can alter the way you make decisions on a daily basis. So we're really attacking that head on. Um. You, you, when you when Cam went out, you kind of talked about how high of a level he was playing at, obviously, and – not that Aaron was unimportant before that, but I mean, you know, the way he kind of slid over into a new position and kind of didn't miss a beat, his mm-hmm. numbers are kind of up there now too. You know, just how has he been able to handle that transition and what has he meant to your defenses? Well, I mean, it's you know, a great example of, um, you know, when you lose somebody so talented and so valuable as Cam Jones, um, you know, you want somebody else to step up, you know, and, uh, you know, Aaron Casey's been here, um, had a really disappointing season last year. Um, and, and he knew that, and we, we met and, and challenged him, and he really attacked this whole offseason. And, and, uh, <clears throat> but I think with, with Cam's absence, it's forced him, you know, to, to be a, more of a leader, uh, to be more of a, a dominant playmaker, to fill that void, you know, of the, even just the, the pure production piece of it all. And so I'm just so proud of him for how he's responded, you know, and uh, not really surprised. I've always believed in the kid. I thought he was a really talented player. We took him as a high school safety to grow into a linebacker. He brings that athleticism to that position. He's got good length. He's strong and he's tough and he can run. And so, but he just lacked confidence, I thought, you know, after last season. So um, just proud of him. And uh, like I said, that's just what you need your your leaders to do. You know, he's one of our leaders on our team. And when somebody goes down, you got to rise up. And we need the same thing to happen in our receiver room right now. You know, we need the same thing to happen on our offense right now. You see anything happen just at every other position where a guy may not be able to go for a week or so here and uh, whatever long that might be, you know. So, but that's just a great testament to him and to his work ethic and, and, and coach um, um, Will doing a great job getting him ready to play and, and to elevate his game when, when called upon. So, yeah, he's been huge for us. You talk a lot about uh, just the mental aspect of the game on Saturday of a bye week. I know coaches uh, approach it differently. Did you just hunker down and, and watch a bunch of other games? Do you unplug? What, what do you do on a weekend off? And what would you like your players to do in that? Well, um, get some rest, you know. Um, and that was, for me, um, I, I tried to actually get some sleep. Um, and then once the day started, um, I watched Penn State film, you know, um, and then did watch them play, you know, and then chose to watch uh, one of our future opponents play later that night. Uh, but in between that, I had my laptop and spent a lot of time watching cut-ups and, and getting ready for Penn State, you know. So, but but I want our guys to get a – they need kind of a – even a change of scenery. I did that from my home rather than doing it from my office. I think that change of scenery is good. Um, and I think that I want all our guys to do something of that nature, you know, change things up a little bit. Uh, you need to kind of chance to unplug, you know, because for us as coaches, we were out recruiting – uh, once we left practice, you know, uh, each day, then we go out and recruit and then uh, spend a lot of time getting ready in that regard. And that's really, really important. And without late Friday night watching games, and that's awesome. And I, and I really enjoy that part. So, but uh, Saturday to me is a chance to watch college football, which is enjoyable for all of us to do um, and uh, to be able to do it from a little different setting. So it was good. I think our guys came back, both coaches and players, refreshed and ready to attack uh, this week. Coach, you talked about the young guys getting a scrimmage. Um, who kind of stuck out to you there that Indiana fans can be excited about? Um, you know, I think uh, um, Omar Cooper, um, and we've made the decision with him, as you've noticed, that uh, you know he played in four games and and uh, do not want to use that that uh, extra snap to to court, cause him to lose a whole year of eligibility. So um, he was a definite guy that jumped out. I think. Uh, um, Cameron Perry is another receiver that really uh, shows unbelievable upside and promise. Um, 
he uh, he has elite burst and uh, ball skills. I think are at a really high level. Um, we see him every day on the offensive scout team. Uh, he definitely is really, um, um, yeah. He, he's been one that uh, on a daily basis has stuck out. But even in that in that setting there as well, um, I think. Uh, Caden Turner is another one. Anytime we seems to, every time we go live, he always seems to to just make plays. You know, he's a physical guy that uh, is growing in his understanding of what we're doing schematically. I think it's very, very important. Um, and I think uh, Brandon Sorsby is another one. You know, really, really talented football player that uh, didn't get here until the summer and and has really just been you know learn our offense and got a chance to be our scout team quarterback every day and seeing him throw. He's just a really, really, really talented football player. So. Very excited about about those three guys uh, for our future. We've got a lot of really good freshmen um, on this roster that need to be developed and need to be continuing to, to get opportunities and practice and just keep growing and, and getting better. So but those are the ones that kind of stick out to me. I think one other guy that kind of hasn't come up and talking about receivers, Anderson Kobe, who I think is, is flashed, but Who's that? Anderson Kobe. Okay. Just not been quite as consistent as yeah. Cam was, but is he another guy that you – you need to kind of keep pushing a little yes. bit further along. Absolutely, without question, and and he can, and I expect him to. You know, and you're right; he hasn't been quite as consistent. Um, has made plays at, for sure. Uh, is a very explosive player. Um, just needs to be consistent in his um, you know performance, and so that's something that we're striving for every day: is that consistency of preparation, consistency of execution, and eventually, you know, how you're going to play the game. So um, he's the guy that this team needs. To, to step up and rise up, and I, and I expect him to, and I want him to, and I believe he will. Hey, Coach. <clears throat> hey, Coach. I'm wondering if you met with a lot of, like, the veterans and, you know, uh, had a group meeting with them to, you know, finish the season strong and, you know, guide the young the young players for their seasons ahead. Yes, there's no question. Met with those, those guys individually, our key guys on our team, and uh, just to be able to challenge them and, and understand what they need to do. Uh, we've identified each guy. There's a certain number of guys in each position group we've identified uh, to meet with and, and to be able to challenge and, and uh, to, to be able to make sure that this finishes the way that uh, we all want it to. You know, so yeah. And to me, it's all it's it's your leadership. You know, it's your leadership council that we have. Those group of guys, those 30 guys, really are those key ones. You know, but at the same time, it's just that understanding of what is necessary in this moment to be able to finish the way we we all want to. I wanted to go back to the question on quarterbacks just to put a fine point on it. Is, I guess, are, are you saying there's a chance Connor won't be the guy on Saturday? Is I'm just saying that uh, you'll have to wait till Saturday to see who, see who our starting quarterback's going to be. So 